What's your emergency? November 3rd, 2020, Henderson, Nevada. First, you will listen to a 911 call from a woman who heard a gunshot to her neighbor's apartment, followed by the dispatch audio and the 911 call from the so-called Bane, Gotham's Reckoning. What's the address of your emergency? Oh my god, the address is 144 Stone Cove um, Avenue. Okay, is that an apartment or a house? It's an apartment, I don't know what this Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Repeat the address because I'm not finding it. It's 1445 Stone Lake Cove. Stone Lake Cove? Stone Lake Cove. Okay. Nevada. I'm showing as the Elysian Apartments. Is that correct? No, it's the Douglas. The Douglas has Stone Lake. Okay, is that an apartment complex? Yes, it's an apartment complex. The apartment number is 13. Uh-huh. Just 13? Zero one. Thirteen two zero one. Yes. Okay. Your name All right. Is... What's your phone number? Okay. What's your phone number? <laughs> My phone number. Okay. Tell me exactly what's happening. I don't know. I heard gunshots, so I jumped out of bed and came next door, and now she's laying here. She can't breathe. I can't hear choking on her blood. Okay. Hold on. Is she outside or inside? She's in her doorway. She's in her doorway. There's blood is everywhere. She... The... Okay. Is she? Ble Can is you she? Hear me? Has she been shot? Yes, I'm assuming that she's been shot. I can't tell. Her head is bleeding. Is she talking to you? Someone else in there? Someone is she at the apartment? The oh is she at the apartment number that you just gave me? Yes, yeah, she's at 1301. I hear you. Somebody okay. else is inside, but I don't know if I can walk in. Okay, no, I want you to keep yourself safe. Hold on one second for me. I'm getting help started to you, okay? I know, I hear you. She's screaming, help her. Okay. Do you see where the lady that's in the doorway? Are you with her yes. right now? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm with can her. you I'm sorry. I'm can sorry. you get a clean dry cloth and apply that to where she's bleeding? She she's bleeding on her head. I don't have anything. Okay. Can you get clean dry cloth? Can you get a, a towel cloth. or a shirt or anything a like towel that? Or a sheet or anything. Okay. Somebody's inside and she's screaming for help. There was okay. so many gunshots. Okay, did anyone see where the person went with the gunshot who was shooting? I'm not did anyone sure. See? No, somebody said. Okay. One of our neighbors said that he had a kid with him. The guy who was shooting? So there's someone in the doorway, and then there's someone additional yelling for help inside? A Hispanic kid and an older black guy. My neighbor seen it. Okay, so there's another oh, female oh. inside? Yes, I'm... Okay. All right, the lady in the doorway, are you able to find a cloth for her? Are you in here? You can't move? Were you shot too? Okay. Okay, I can't move anything. Should I move the bed and get her? She's, okay. she's in it, the doorway. If we can, I want to try to get pressure on on where she's bleeding from. She said she want to get pressure on where she's bleeding from, but the woman in the... Oh, my God, there's somebody else in here. Okay. There's somebody it's... else on the floor. Okay, are they bleeding? Yes, they're dead. I'm sure they're dead. Okay, are they breathing right now? The one woman, she's on the floor. There's three people in the building. There's three people in the phone in general. The one woman in the doorway is still breathing. I can hear her. It sounds like there's blood on her lungs. Okay. There is another woman shot and dead in there. There's another woman in here with her legs shot. Okay, so we have three victims total? Yeah, there's three victims total. Do you know if anyone have you a 404? Showing by lat long in the area of the Starbucks on Stephanie and North 5. North 51. To North 51. It came through as a phase two in the area of the Starbucks on Stephanie. We had an open line with a female crying, then disconnect. Voicemail and recall. We have a prior on the phone, but it doesn't give a home address. Showing in the area of Starbucks on Stephanie, North 5. North 51. To North 51 control. North 51. North 11. To North 51 control. To North 51. We are now getting a separate 404 that's showing in the area of the Terribles in that same area, advising that somebody may have been shot, break. 
control continuing the PSV is saying she's a cleaning lady. She's locked in the bathroom. We have a language barrier. We're trying to get an interpreter, but it's possibly related. This one's in the area of terrible herbs. Control 1037. Is that the terrible to Sunset Marks? Uh, from, uh, Sunset Wigwam, or Stephanie and Wigwam is the closest. Copy, I'll be arriving there in a second. I'm just coming up to the light. 1387. Units en route to the Starbucks or terrible call. We're now getting a call saying it's Elysian at Stone Lake, 1445 Stone Lake Cove Avenue, possibly apartment 201. Break. Control continuing. This is the subject who is on scene. Might be the cleaning lady. We're still trying to get further. Control continuing. There's going to be three victims with gunshot wounds. We are starting medical. Control. Two no 51. Just advising us that event 483, not 475. It's all going to be incident 485 is going to be the one that has all the information in it. It looks like there is multiple callers giving us different locations, but it's actually at 1445 Stone Lake Apartment 13-2, looks like, in Building 13. Just be advised, the suspect is wearing khaki pants. This PR has no further information. This PR ran when he saw the, four thir the 415 A's have been break. Control continuing. They're advising the suspect kicked the door to Apartment 201 and went inside there. break. Control continuing. They're also advising that a neighbor saw a male and male juvenile. Possibly they were the shooters just prior to the call. Mm -hmm. Control Sam 1337. Go ahead and uh, have medical stage. Your incoming units continue to have an expedite. Yep. Uh, for incoming units expedite. Control Sam 1337. Be advised, I got two victims down, uh, multiple gunshot wounds. Copy two victims down, multiple gunshot wounds. 21's arriving now. Correction, 61's arriving. Two north 21. Control team 1337, be advised. I have a third, third subject now, one at gunpoint. Copy, third subject, one at gunpoint. Location. He's in apartment 13201. Be advised, one at gunpoint is not our suspect. It is a here uh, citizen. We still have suspects outstanding. Copy, not suspect, but still at gunpoint, suspect still outstanding. Right. Henderson 911, what's the address of your emergency? Hello? Hello? Hi, how Hello? can I help you? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How can I help you? This is Jason. I sometimes think my name is XM Satellite Radio, and I'm here with, we're doing a movie. It's, I want to introduce myself. I'm sorry. I am Gotham's Reckoning, also known as Bane. So, Bane. And Where are you, sir? Hello? Well, Bane, let me introduce my friend. Okay, you're uh, the 911 mine. Hello? Your name is, you're, your name is you're on a 911 line. How can I help you? Yeah, I want a chopper. A big you chopper. A what? Uh, I want a fucking a helicopter. What do they call it now, Dave? A helicopter. a helicopter. He wants a helicopter, and he says he wants it now because he's scared. Who? Who are you? You're my neighbor, right? Oh, yeah, so uh, he's, my, he's my son, um, so I'm not going to hurt him. But I don't I don't think you guys are getting the point. You're trying to play games and tap the line. I have a big, what kind of gun is this? Is it big? Okay. Oh, he says it's little, but on the side of it says six four P226, 40 caliber Smith and Wesson. So I killed a guy named Jason Bourne. I'm from the future. Like, uh, what's the name of the last face of the, of the avatar? Is it good? Did you like that? Movie? What's your address? What's your address, what, sir? What's your address? This is really important. So just, hey, I'm not going to hurt you as long as you don't get your address wrong. If you get your address wrong, I have to kill you. Units, just be advised, we are landline with a male now asking for a helicopter, saying that he killed somebody. He's advising he's at Unit 13301. Confirming of the same uh, complex? Affirm. 1445 Stone Lake, 13301. Female advising she does not know the suspect. Step up further. And units, just be advised that the male is at 420. The subject is advising that he's also with a 12-year-old named and saying that the male wants to kill the 12-year-old. CR3 control, be advised, there is a black Escalade. I'm being told by a individual that lives in the uh, in the apartment. Uh, it's just been sitting there, apparently belongs to the suspect. Where is it at right now? Control 2 nor 11, we have, we've extricated one victim from the building. We need fire to meet us at building 11, please. Copy. We're going to, nobody at the pool, correct? She's unconscious, but still breathing as of now. Yes. Copy. Nobody at the pool, just to Building 11, right? Just Building 11. Copy, and is the scene stable for them to come up? The scene is stable for them to come up, and that black Escalade's parked on the east side of the apartments. It's got its uh, tail lights on right now. Copy, black Escalade is on east side of... 1387, we're trying to make contact with the Escalade. Keep the air clear. 
April 10, 1253, can you contact Starbucks and have them go on a lockdown? Upper. Average 11, got it. Control stand 1387, this vehicle is going to be involved. It is going to be the suspect. I see a 12-year-old in the passenger seat. I see hands of the driver and the child. Keep the air clear. Copy. Lincoln 657, CP will be set up by building 16. CP building 16. Does unit have stop six? Control stand 1387. The male has a gun. Copy, male has a gun. Control stand 1387. This is going to be the suspect. We do see a 413. The child has his hands up. They're going to be in the front seat of the black Escalade. The Escalade is facing east. Just talk to him. See if he'll roll down the window. Just see if he'll roll down the window. Shots fired. Shots fired. Copy, shots fired. Is he pointing at you? Yeah. Okay. He's pointing it. Henderson police say the suspect, Jason Neal Bourne, lived in the upstairs apartment and for some unknown reason went down one flight of stairs and forced his way into an apartment. There he shoots 38 year old Diana Howitmitt in the head as well as 33 year old Veronica Muniz. Both died on the scene. Diana's 12 year old son was taken by Bourne at gunpoint. Bystanders advised police that a vehicle parked near the initial crime scene might belong to the suspect. Officers approach and confirm that Bourne was sitting in the driver's seat and the young boy was sitting in the passenger seat. Police and dispatch asked Bourne multiple times to roll down the car window to communicate with officers, but Bourne denied. Officers said they fired after they saw Bourne hold a handgun to the boy's head. <laughs> The seventh grade boy was pulled from the vehicle and emergency medical crews began life-saving efforts. He died at the scene. Investigators said Bourne had fired multiple times inside of the vehicle. Diana's 60-year-old daughter was shot by Bourne as well. She was rushed to the hospital where she was listed in stable condition. It was not clear if the suspect and the victims knew each other. Jason Neal Bourne died on scene as well. They say the camp seemed to find a motive for what he did. Police say five people were involved and four people were killed, one of them being the suspect they shot in the parking lot. It was just shots and then the cops yelling for people to stand back pretty much. I'm still processing it. I didn't sleep much last night. What's the address? What's the address? All right, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am. All right. Uh, October 2016, Lincoln County, North Carolina. A man calls 911 and says that someone has just been shot. Ma'am, alright, um, there's a young child here. She has been shot by a firearm. Okay, repeat the address to make sure I have it right. I'll stand at the end of the road. Bring What's your name? The vehicle. Okay, the parents here, the parents here, or, uh, okay, what's the phone number that you're calling from? My number is... Okay, are you with the child now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, ma'am? Are you with the child now? Um, her parents are with her. Her parents are with her. They're holding her. What, what's the best thing for us to do, ma'am? Okay, just apply pressure to the wound. How old is she? Well, she's, she's probably in her mid... She's probably about 10 or 12 years old. Hey, 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 Is she hey, awake? Hey. Uh, listen, apply pressure to the wound. Is hey. she awake? Is she conscious? She's awake. She's just Is in a lot of pain. Is she breathing? Yes, she's breathing. She's been shot in the stomach. Okay. You see the help. When did this happen? How long ago? Just now. I called you as soon as it happened. Okay. Who shot her? Is that, are they nearby? Um, it was an accident. I'm not sure who shot her. I'm really not sure who shot her. It was just an accident. Okay. Somebody was somebody All was right. playing with a firearm. Okay. And, and shot her. Is she is she completely alert? Is she responding appropriately yes. to you? Can you see me? Yes, yeah, she's she's alert. She's been shot in the stomach, man. Is there more? Okay. Is there more than one wound? Is it just one wound? No, just one wound, man. Okay. 
An off-duty Lincoln County deputy was showing her service weapon to friends at her house. She accidentally fired the gun, causing the bullet to go through a wall and striking her 11-year-old daughter in the stomach. 38-year-old Misty Flowers, who worked at the Lincoln County Courthouse, was fired for accidentally shooting her own daughter. Misty's daughter underwent surgery and survived the incident. Misty Flowers reportedly brought her service issue handgun like this out to show some of the people at the gathering at her home on Loop Road near Denver. The sheriff didn't say if alcohol was involved. Somehow the trigger is pulled. One shot goes through the wall and hits the 11 year old girl in the abdomen. A sergeant with the sheriff's department arrived. They put the girl in his car and rushed her to the hospital. The sheriff met Flowers there. It was clearly and notably uh, the straw. The sheriff said the girl had serious injuries, but is recovering well. exactly what happened. Um, my daughter was just attacked by a small brown bear. Okay. Are, are you guys safe now? May 2018, Denver, Colorado. A mother calls 911 and tells the dispatcher that a bear has just attacked her daughter. Uh, yeah. I had to chase her through the yard, but... Where are you guys at now? In my kitchen. You can send me an ambulance. You just have to tell me what you want me to do. Do you want to sit in an ambulance? No. We're going to have a deputy go out and check that area. Where where did you last see the bear at? Uh, my backyard. My husband says it's right there at the back door. Okay. Is anybody going to be at the home when you guys, when deputies get out there? Um, yes, we just got my husband. Here, let me pass you to my husband. Okay. Hello? Yes, sir. This is Kirsten with the sheriff's office. Number one, anybody else? No one else is injured other than your daughter? Right. She's the only one. Okay. And you went to the back door and it came up to the back door. <laughs> okay. So it's still, it's still outside. Yep. Okay. Are you guys going to be safely able to exit, sir? Because I don't want you to take her to the hospital if you're not going to be able to go outside. I mean, I can go out if I take a gun out. Okay. I mean, I've got a 22 that I could shoot around off in the air. We have a deputy headed your way. So okay. do you think we should start an ambulance that way since you guys won't be able to safely leave? Um, she's just missing a, a chunk out of her butt, a couple spots in her leg. Okay. She's, I think it'd be more, she's more ready. Sure. Sure. When did this happen? Uh, like five minutes ago. Okay. She was outside. She was camping out. She completely alert. Um. Yes. Okay. She just watched me walk up to her. Okay. Is she responding appropriately? Yep. Okay. I said her name and she looked at her head. Okay. And what part of the body was injured? Her butt. Her okay. Butt, her back. Okay. He picked her up by her butt. He picked her up by her butt. Okay. With you think with his mouth or his paws? Yes, with his mouth. Okay. Okay. And any other children, sir? Yes. I've okay. got uh, two other kids of ours, and then we have a few grandkids here. Gotcha. Were they all outside or just her? Just her. Gotcha. She's the only girl. All the rest are boys. Oh, my goodness. So she was out camping by herself. A five-year-old girl was attacked by a black bear outside her home. The girl was taken to the hospital and recovered from her injuries. The girl's mother told state wildlife officers that her daughter went outside around 2.30 a.m. After hearing noises she thought might be coming from her dog, the mother said she heard screaming and found her daughter being dragged by a large black bear. She told authorities that the bear dropped the girl after she yelled at it. Wildlife officials
officials announced they killed the bear believed to be responsible for the attack. They also said they are confident the bear they killed is the same one that attacked the girl based on its appearance and behavior, but authorities won't know for sure until its body is analyzed. Colorado has an estimated 17,000 to 20,000 bears, a population that's considered robust, and a state of 5.7 million people that also attracts many tourists. Every year, there are cases of hungry bears getting into cars and sometimes buildings to find food, especially during periods of drought. Wildlife officials stress black bears are not out to hunt people, but attacks can happen once bears get access to easy, high-calorie rich human food and return for more. April 2016, Lake Mary, Florida. A son calls 911 and tells the dispatcher that her mom was just attacked by a bear. You can hear her plead for help in the background. Hi, rescue. This is of the trip in Lake Mary. Thank you. Call her, please. Please verify your address. Uh, yeah, that's my address. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. Came in screaming. She okay. said a bear attack. Okay. Are you are you with her right now? Uh yes. Okay. Stay on the phone with me. We're gonna have him on the way. Okay. How old is she? Uh, forty. Forty. Uh, okay. There. This is forty-five. 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 I got it. Is she awake? Is she awake? Is she awake? She's awake. Is she breathing? She's breathing. She's just traumatized. She's breathing and she's bleeding hard. Okay. How long ago did this happen? Uh, ten minutes. Five minutes ago. Okay. Uh, you have it. You have a. You have an answer to this back. Sir. Yes. We okay. already have them on the way. I have a couple of questions for okay. you. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Where is the animal? Uh, he, 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 they're off in the woods. They were. They were okay. in the garage. Okay. There were three of them. All right, is there any serious bleeding? There's a lot of serious bleeding, yes. Okay, is she completely alert? She's a, she's, she's calmed down, she's alert, yes, yes. Where, what part of the body was bitten? It looks like the face. Her face? Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, just stay on the, hold on. All right, we have them on the way emergency, okay? okay? Now, what I need you to do is get a clean, dry cloth. Okay. All right, go ahead and apply firm, even pressure to the wound, okay? Okay, all right. Alright, if anything changes, call us back on 911. Okay. We're on the way. Thank you. Bye bye. Frank Frana, the victim's husband, said his wife encountered the bears, which had pulled some trash cans out of the family's garage while she was checking on her kids who were playing at a neighbor's home. He said there were five bears rummaging through the trash, and one of them stood up and attacked her. He says she was able to eventually break away and run into the house. She collapsed on the floor, and her oldest son called 911. Terry Frana survived the attack. Florida Fish and Wildlife officers have killed another bear. This bear displayed uh, food conditioning and no fear of human. Fish and Wildlife officers say the bear was near the home of Terry Frana, the Lake Mary woman who was mauled by a 200-pound black bear last Saturday. The victim screamed in the background as family members called 9... December 2015, Rockaway Township, New Jersey. Three scouts and their leader, 50-year-old Christopher, had been hiking in Split Rock Reservoir when all of a sudden the bear attacks Christopher in a cave they were exploring in. Without any hesitation, one of the scouts calls 911. Okay, and did he come out of the cave? No, he's still in there right now. He's still in there? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Wait, where are we? 
What? Don't hang up, okay? I don't, like, I don't want any of you to get lost in the woods. What? Can you hear me? My scoutmaster just says get some, it's chocolate. He's so attacked. He no. said to get some fruit to get the bear away. Say what? My scoutmaster just suggested that we get fruit to put the bear away. He, he's still okay. He's okay. But where's the bear? What? Where's the bear at? In the cave. He's in a cave. Okay. It's my scoutmaster. All right. Do you have? Do I have what? Do you, what does he want you to do? Get food to get the bear out? Yeah. Do you suggest we do that and just let, and let him stay until you guys come? What do you, do you have food with you? Yeah. Hey, what, are you going in the cave? No. Do not go in the cave. Okay. Tell them not to go in the cave. Okay. All right. They're looking for you guys, all right? Okay. Thank you. Just stay in the line with me, though, okay? Okay. You guys no are doing great. Thank you. Wait, excuse me? Yes. Are they coming in cars or are they walking in the woods? I believe they're walking or have uh, ATVs. Okay. All right. They're at the intersection of the blue trail and the yellow trail. Yeah, between two lakes. What's that? Between two lakes. All right. They're saying they're in between two lakes. But I don't see it. I hear it. Wait, I hear the I see the helicopter. All right. I see the, the helicopter. helicopter. I see the helicopter. All right. Okay. We're telling them. Is it straight up, straight above you? No, it's to the, the left of them. It's to the left of them. All right. Don't, you don't want to run if you guys see the bear. Okay. All right. What should we do? Just, you want to stay still. Okay. If they don't we, feel threatened. Should you make noise? Um, you know, the bear, just stay on the line with me, all right? And okay. Okay. I won't, I won't run. You don't want to make any abrupt movements if you see the bear. Stay still. No abrupt movements. We hear the helicopter. What about you don't yes. see it now? Wait, I can... We see the helicopter. It's right above it. Tell it to land at any time soon. Right, right now would be the best if they want it. Tell we're waiting to speak to the bandana. It's nearly right above us. It's nearly right above us. Tell it to land. It's right above us. We can stand. We can stand. We can All right, well, there's four people in total, but one is separate from the three. All right, you're right above. Oh, we should flash and watch. Sorry, sorry. We should wait. We should flash and watch. Hey, Frankie. Frankie. I don't know what it is. We should flash and watch. All right, Frankie. Yeah. Listen to me. I don't want you guys to move. All right. Okay. They're saying that people are moving. They don't want you guys moving. Tell them they see flashing lights. I don't know whose lights they're seeing. Tell them they keep coming. We can see the red lights. We see someone walking. They have somebody. They're yelling at somebody to stop. All right. They're seeing flashing lights from somebody. We're not sure who. It's not moving anymore. It stopped? Yeah. I'm not sure what it is. You want me to send me stay here and two scouts go check it out? Okay. Hold on. Hold on. They're walking? Yeah, they're not walking towards them. Nobody has them. They're yelling. But they said the person stopped now, whoever had the flashing light. Okay. Yeah, you want me to say, please, go walk there. Yeah, you want me to say, please, go walk there. Yeah. Yeah, you want me to say, please, go walk there. Okay. All right. You want me to say, please, go walk there. Go tell them to come over here now. Frankie, we think we have somebody. Yeah.
After emergency services arrived, the scout leader was airlifted to a hospital with non life threatening injuries. The three kids were uninjured. Christopher said the black bear grabbed his foot and pulled him further into the cave, biting and scratching him. He struck the bear twice in the head with a rock hammer. He then pulled his sweatshirt over his head and curled into the fetal position. He yelled to the scouts who were outside of the cave to leave and go get help. New Jersey's Department of Environmental Protection said it was investigating the cause of the attack. Three young scouts on a desperate mission to save their scout leader, 50-year-old Chris Petronino had climbed into a cave off a trail at Split Rock Reservoir. It was a bear's den. The kids called 911 while also trying to help their scout leader. As rescuers are making their way to the children, Petronino made it out of the cave on his own, speaking to a 911 dispatcher in remorse and in pain. I'm sorry about this. What's that? I'm sorry about all this. No, no, no. Listen, there's nothing, listen, there's nothing to be sorry about. Okay, let's just get you taken care of, okay? Forget the apologies. That's the last of our concern. Either calm kicked in early or their scout training or both because the kids remained calm, knowing that Petronino was in harm's way, knowing they needed to help rescuers reach them and their master. Petronino, dressed in camouflage, finally heard help coming, worried still, of course, about the three children. Kids are out looking for you guys. What's that? The kids are out looking for you. Oh, no, no, no. Well, we have everybody up there looking for you. No, no, no. We, we know that. At this point, Petronino has declined all interviews, but as a parent, you can only imagine that more than anything, he is grateful that those children were not hurt. August 21st, 2019, Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, so this number one call is not particularly disturbing, but I think it's disturbing in a way where maybe something could have been done to avoid what transpired. Uh, this number one call is made by Raymond Throckmorton, Pamela Perry's attorney, the girlfriend of Anthony Warner. Uh, yeah, let's take a listen. Metro Nashville 911, what is the address of your emergency? Well, I'm not exactly sure. Let me explain to you what I got. I'm, I'm an attorney here in Nashville, have been about 30 years. My name is Ray Throckmorton. Phone number I'm calling from is, and that is my personal cell phone. I have a client who has called me this morning, and her full legal name is Pam Pamela Perry, and she has made a number of, of threats about her own life, and I believe her to be at the following address. It is 38 Lane, spelled S-Y. That's Nashville, Tennessee, 37211. I am on my way to that address right now. 20, she is armed. Seconds. She has firearms. She has told me that this morning. She is supposedly with the firearms on the front porch. But I can tell you that if a bunch of police cars and ambulances pull up with sirens wailing and lights flashing, that she will shoot herself. So I need a police officer to meet me over there where maybe I can defuse this situation. Okay, I don't want you going right to the house, but just repeat the address for me for verification. It is 38 Lane, okay, Nashville, is, Tennessee. Okay, is this a house apartment or a duplex, do you know? Uh, it's a home over in, in the Tusculum area okay. uh, off of Haywood Lane. Okay. What is Pamela's description? Is she white, black, Hispanic, Asian? She is white. She's middle-aged. I don't know. Pamela's, what, uh, maybe mid-50s? Yeah. Last time I saw her, she had red hair. Yeah. Two. Last time I saw her, she had dyed her hair red. Seconds. Okay. And I understand that it was the suicidal threats, but tell me exactly what happened, what she said. She has uh, threatened uh, to take her own life, and she has also given me information about another uh, resident of that part of Nashville who is, um, I think, also got some mental and emotional problems, who is allegedly building bombs in his house on Bakertown Road, which is right off of Antioch Pike. And I have reason to believe that there might actually be more truth to what she's telling me about him than what she's telling me about herself. 
Okay. So that's not happening at this address, is that correct? It, it is not. What is the, hold on, do we know the Bakertown Road address? I, I'm, I'm going to have to look it up. Okay, that's okay. Uh, and tell and, and that guy's name, yeah, yeah, I'll tell that to the officer when he gets there, but I'm on the way right now. Yeah, I don't want you to go right to the house, so what kind of vehicle are you in? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in a black uh, Chevy uh, Avalanche uh, with tinted windows and, and uh, yeah. Is there okay. somewhere that they can – yeah, I don't want you going right to the house. So is there somewhere that they Yeah, I'm not going right to the house. I can meet you just back from the house on Ezel uh, Road. Okay, there was something At the corner – At the corner cor of Ezel and Hayes. Corner of Ezel and – no, no, corner of, of Seifert, S-Y-F-E-R-T, and Ezel. Okay, well, that, I mean, that street is only a couple houses, so that's not very long. Can you wait at the corner of Haywood and Ezel? There's a parking lot right there. I can, I can, yeah, I can wait at the corner of Haywood and Ezel, yes. Okay, um, I'm going to get this sent up, and we'll get somebody out there. Did, so was there anything specific? I understand that she's armed, so was her specific threat to shoot herself, or was that not mentioned? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. yes. Okay, and was there any other reasoning why or what was going on today to uh, cause no, no, dear, not. I, I got to drive before I cause a wreck, so that's all I know right now. I'll meet the officers at the place you told me to. All right, we'll get somebody to you as soon as we can. Okay. Thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. Bye. And one more thing. Before Raymond made that 911 call, Pamela Perry left this chilling voicemail on Raymond's phone. The woman makes it clear she wanted to stop Anthony Warner from hurting large numbers of people. I won't have hundreds, possibly thousands of lives on my soul. And I will shoot him in the leg if I have to. God, don't make me shoot somebody. I'm going to call him and I'm going to get him over here and I'm going to record because I don't have proof, but That's I know it. what he's doing. And I'm afraid for my life and everybody else's. And a police narrative indicates she had two unloaded pistols that belonged to Tony Warner, and she wanted them out of her house. Throckmorton is still in contact with the woman. He says she knew exactly what happened the moment she saw news of the bombing downtown. When she woke up Christmas Day, she picked up the phone and immediately called the FBI. But yeah, it makes me wonder if something could have been done to stop the explosion. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, be safe out there. Love you. Peace.